We continue our series of messages from Galatians with some of the most magnificent assurances and admonitions given to us in Scripture. I want to read from the fifth chapter, taking that first verse, and then verses 13 and 14. Listen to the Word of God. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made you free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. May the Lord bless this reading from his word, and to him be glory and honor. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Lord, we pray that as we interpret this scripture that we will have an experience of emancipation, that we will be set free, that those who have known you for a long time will come to an experience of fresh freedom, and those who have never known you and the wonder of your grace will experience freedom for the first time. Oh, blessed Lord, I pray for a fresh anointing of your Spirit in my mind and my heart that I might preach this word with power. And I pray for a, an anointing on all who hear that their ears might be open, their hearts ready, their wills quickened. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. What time is it? Have you checked your watches? What if you looked down and checked your watch and it said T minus 33 years, 18 days, 10 minutes, and 13 seconds? I could say that's some strange kind of watch. And yet, uh, there is a watch that will tell you how long you have to live. David Kendrick of Berkshire, New York, has developed an actual watch that sets the chronology of your life in reverse and based on actuarial data of your health, your heritage, your habits, your inner life, will predict how long you have to live. Wouldn't it be a strange thing several times during the day to look, well, uh, not a whole lot of time left. It might do two things for us. It might sharpen us to uh, realize the precious gift of life. And it might help us to use life and our relationships with greater intensity and intentionality. It's time to start living, to claim that we're forgiven, to begin to claim the abundant life that we've been given. So often we live as if uh, we had all of the time in the world. And we miss the wonderful discovery of what life was truly meant to be. I talk to people all of the time who have put off really living because of memories of the past. There is nothing more important for the discovery of a great life than the cleansing of our conscience. 
Martin Luther felt that deeply. He said, my conscience has been made captive to the Word of God. When he came to the fifth chapter of Galatians and the promise of freedom in Christ, he asserted that that which was liberated by Christ was the conscience. Not only are we freed from the will to sin, but we are freed from the memory of past failures. Now, the conscience, in technical terms, is the superego. It's uh, made up of all that we've been taught and all that we've learned about what's right and wrong. For those who come under the lordship and sovereignty of God, it includes the Ten Commandments and all that God has said about how we are to live. And that superego controls what we think and feel and how we react to what we do or what we did. When Jesus Christ came, he came to set us free. The Apostle Paul in this verse, in Galatians 5.1, captures the vitality of that. The translation in the King James Version and in the New King James Version takes the phrases and reverses them. Actually, uh, many of the original manuscripts have this first sentence, this first verse, in two sentences. And it goes like this. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Pause. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit to a new yoke of slavery. The Apostle Paul declared that we have been liberated from the wrath of God. God, in his sovereign grace, sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for all of the sins and failures of the world, and he set us free. And we are to stand fast and not submit to another yoke of slavery of legalism or the law. We have been liberated from an evil and a condemning conscience. What a wonderful gift. And yet, why is it that when we check how long we have to live, most of us know that we will spend a great deal of the remaining time going over the past failures? Did it ever happen to you? It has to be. I've known times of wonderful freedom. I gave my life to Christ. I felt like I'd been cut loose, taken out of a prison of incrimination for the first time in my life. But it wasn't long before I found other things that uh, I could use to judge myself. It was wonderful to know that I was forgiven. And then it wasn't long before I met some people who told me that it's okay to be uh, set free in Christ, but there's a certain way you've got to live and certain rules and regulations you've got to keep. And if you don't, then you're not going to be justified before God. And it wasn't long before that old conscience of mine that had been so sensitive to try and do the right thing adopted all those rules and regulations, and so I leaped on my stallion of compulsive discipleship and rode off in all directions. And I lost my freedom. Well, after I recognized that that was wrong and uh, came back to the cross and received fresh grace and was released again, it wasn't long before uh, the intellectual side of me took over. And I believe that there is a truth and an untruth in the world. And the Scripture gives us the truth. And it wasn't long before I had all of the details of clear Orthodox theology outlined. And I judged other people and judged myself on the basis of which I fulfilled all of the rigid theories of orthodox, conservative, fundamentalist Christianity. I lost my freedom. And I had to come back and be set free 
at the foot of the cross with fresh grace. It was when I became a pastor and lived in the rough and tumble of the failures and hurts and problems and aches of people that I was brought back to my freedom much more quickly every day because I realized that the church was filled with uptight, bound-up religious people who desperately needed to be released. And I knew that if I were to be a part of the liberating process of the living God in the contemporary church, I had to remain free. I had to have a fresh experience of freedom every day. I had to rediscover it. I had to come to God on my knees before the cross and know that I was loved and forgiven so that as people who came in their rigidness and hardness could receive a tender touch of freedom. Have you ever had a time when you wondered what it might be like when you get to heaven? Have you ever gone back over some of the things that you've said and done and, and wondered if God is going to bring them up again? Have you ever done that? Have you ever been quiet some time and all of a sudden your mind darts off and you relive some terrible thing that you said or did? And you say, how can I ever think that God would love me and that I would have any right to go to heaven? And when I get there, he'll probably say, I remember that, and it's time that we make an accounting for that. Well, when he looks at the list of all of our failures, he'll also note that they've all been canceled by the blood of his own son. Can we live in that freedom now? I say yes. For freedom, Christ has set us free. That's the assurance. Now the admonition. Stand fast and do not submit to a new yoke of slavery. For the Galatians, that meant don't go back into legalism or back into their pagan religions, seeking to somehow justify yourself before God. What does it mean for you? For those Gentile Christians in Galatia who had become Christians, the Judaizers challenged them that they had to do something in order to make themselves right with God. The men practiced the rite of circumcision in order to be able to say outwardly that they were now obedient to the law of God. And they took a yoke of bondage onto themselves. We do the same thing. Once having been set free, we incriminate ourselves, try to forget the things that we have done wrong, and then are reminded. And we fall from the experience of the grace that we've received. Does it ever happen to you? In the 21st chapter of Exodus, there's a marvelous description of how slaves were set free. You know, in ancient Israel, a slave could serve only seven years. And at the end of the seven years, just as the time came, the master would have to go to the slave and say, you are about to be set free. Get ready for your freedom. And then the slave would have to understand that everything he had acquired during the seven years he had been in slavery to the master would have to be left with the master. If the master came to him and said, you can go free now, and in the words of Exodus, the slave would respond, but I love my master, I love my wife, I love my children, I will not go free. And then, with that commitment, the master would take the person, bring him to a doorpost, and take an awl and drive it through his ear. And that would forever be a sign 
that that slave understood that true freedom was not independence from his master, but a close personal relationship with his master, serving him and doing his will. It has tremendous application to us. There are times when we'd like to break out and throw off the traces and do what we want, when we want to, with whom we want to, and live an antinomian kind of recklessness. And Christ says, Are you, do you want to be free? And suddenly, we see the issues. There is no freedom apart from a relationship with him. It's knowing him and loving him and receiving his love that frees our inner conscience and releases us from the tension of self-incrimination. It's in relationship with him that we receive the flow of love that gives us love for other people so that we can serve them and care for them. And we say, Master, don't put me out. All of that desire for license and liberty and doing what I want to do is, is not freedom at all. Oh, Master, don't drive an awl through my ear. Drive the cross through my heart that I might know that I belong to you forever. A wonderful thing begins to happen as again and again we realize that we have been made bond servants of Christ to serve other people. Christ sets us free in order to be able to serve. He releases his power only to those who serve. I tire of people who want some kind of esoteric religious experience for themselves. The love and forgiveness and power of Christ is given that we might become involved in loving as he has loved us. And as we discover that love and live in it, then we can go to the people who desperately need our love and forgiveness and acceptance. It's a psychological truth as well as a biblical fact. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. You can't love your neighbor until you love yourself, and you can't love yourself until you're loved profoundly by Christ who lived and died and suffered for you to set you free. And then it's a vulnerable kind of love, no longer judgmental, no longer cranky and rules-oriented and religious, but free, flowing, caring. Because you see, you've gone through the meat grinder of your own realization of your inadequacy, your failure, and Christ has loved you in spite of it all. You can't love anyone else profoundly until you've been loved like that. One of my favorite poets, as you all know, is George Matheson. Matheson discovered this kind of bondage that set him free. He became a bondservant to Christ and therefore was set free. And he served others all of his life. He picked up his pen and wrote, Make me a captive, Lord, and then I shall be free. Force me to render up my sword, and I will more than conquer be. I sink in life's alarms when by myself I stand. Imprison me within your arms, and strong will be my hand. My heart is weak and poor until it master find. It has no spring of action, sure. It varies in the wind. It cannot freely move until thou hast wrought its chain. Enslave me 
with your matchless love, and deathless it shall reign. My will is not my own, until thou hast made it thine. Oh, if it should reach a monarch's throne, it must its crown resign. I only stand unbent amid the clashing strife when on thy bosom it has lent and found in thee its life. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand fast. Don't accept a new yoke of bondage. You are free.